welcome to Live at Five on Thursday, the 27th of October. And Miss Honey is in the house. Jennifer Blood is here. Or Jen. She's, or Jen. She, or she's Jen Blood, too. Yeah. Well, I just got introduced to Jen. Okay. Uh, but wait, wait, wait uh, before we get to Jennifer Blood, yeah. Jen Blood, Miss Honey, uh, this is a huge day. I've been waiting for this day for 23 you years. You have. You're a bit emotional about this, aren't you? Uh, Falsettos is reopening tonight, and you guys, this is like one of my favorite musicals ever. And I've been waiting 23 years for it to come back and look. So we have, I'm going to the opening. So excited. That's why I'm wearing this a suit. This fancy suit. Uh, I already saw it last week. He's but going again. I'm seeing it again because I'm excited. We have, we have a great squigs, a really good squigs, I think. We have a fresh face with this little this little nugget, as Susan Blackwell might say. Anthony Rosenthal, who plays Jason, who's amazing. And this is, of course, an iconic for Falsettos fans. You know what's happening here. Uh, so anyway, it's exciting. So I just wanted to uh, say, have you got plenty of Kleenex to take with you? It's just, I just I use my sleeves. Okay, I, fine. I just because you cry. Let it go. I, oh, I'm a you, you I am a crier. You're a crier. You're a crier. I will be crying tonight. Uh, and we're gonna have great coverage uh, tomorrow morning yeah, on the site. So absolutely. please look for that. It's very exciting. There's a new Broadway show got announced. One that we weren't absolutely. necessarily expecting. I mean, we'd sort it of heard about it. It was heard that it might land Indecent. a theater. It's called yes, Indecent. It was um, uh, Paula Vogel. Done off Broadway. Yeah. Never hit there. None of us saw it there, though. No. Um, and I mean, we don't know who's going to be in it yet. It's, it's about the premiere of a 1923 play called God of Vengeance, which apparently is considered an important work in Jewish culture by some and libel by others. So um, that's going to be interesting. And it's landed a Schubert Theatre to be announced. So congratulations to that team, because they were working hard to do that. Um, okay, interesting. Now, I'm a big King Kong here. fan. I've been waiting for King Kong. I'm yeah. not convinced King Kong's a great musical idea. <laughs> I'm not convinced it's the next falsettos. I think Michael Reel is sharpening the knives right now. Well, I mean, I yeah, it kind of has it written all over it. it does, but does um, Marsha <laughs> Norman, yeah. this this project, it was done Tony in Australia. Winner, Marsha Norman. It's, and she made, of course, the great musicals Color Purple, Bridges of Madison mm. County. And, she, of course, she wrote uh, Night Mother. Um, she's been working, she wrote nine drafts. Nine drafts. Nine drafts nine. of King Kong, and they came to the conclusion that because King Kong doesn't really speak, there wasn't much of a b- she, book. She, I she, mean, there couldn't, wasn't, she really couldn't figure it out. With that. She just admitted uh, that she couldn't figure uh-huh. it out. So they are going in a different direction she was with a this structure. writer. I know. And Jace Robert Brown, who of course she made Bridges of Madison yeah. County with, has been writing songs. So I don't know if he's still attached. We don't No, we don't that we don't wasn't really commented know. on. Like I mean I had a statement from the producer, but that was all they were giving me. Yeah. Like, nothing else. So uh, uh, stay tuned. Yeah. And of course it requires an enormous theater. And lots of money. <laughs> uh, Tracy Letts has a new play called Man from Nebraska at second stage, starts in January. It's about a man from Nebraska. Yeah. Reed and Bernie's casting has be been announced. It. And now Heidi Arbruster, yeah. and it's about a man from Nebraska. Yeah. I wrote that down in case I forgot. Uh, <laughs> Nia Vardalos, yes. um, a big fat Greek wedding. Now, the uh, the girl who played the daughter in the sequel is, is in Les Liaisons Dangerous, yes. which I'm seeing tonight. You're seeing that tonight yeah. while I'm crying. So while you're, you're crying from over. You. I'm looking uh, at Leah Schreiber while you're sobbing. Yeah, you're going to have different ball. emotions Absolutely. Uh, to that. Yeah. Um, Tommy Kill is directing a play called Tiny Beautiful Things that Nia Vardalos wrote and is starring in. And it's based on a book. It's at the public starting November fifteenth. Uh, it's about an advice columnist, yeah. and they just announced the rest of the cast: Philip James Brandon, Alfredo Narciso, and Natalie Willems Torres. They play people who write in; uh, they need advice. Sounds fun. Yeah, in need of advice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, also, this this kid Lucas Hedges is like well, a hot. Apparently, is the next new big. The thing. next big thing. The next big thing. He's in this movie Manchester by the Sea with Casey Affleck, and there's all kinds of buzz. And yeah. he's in a new play at MCC Theater, The Lortel. Yeah. Starting January twelfth. Uh, it's called Yen. It's about two boys who play video games and watch porn all day. Yeah. Yeah, so he's oh. one of those boys. Well, so so we'll check that. that out. All right. Uh, Hamilton. Um, Hamilton. Needing More Hamilton today. news. Um, it's been certified double platinum. And the last album to do that was Wicked. Cast album. I think, I think Hamilton might have done it quicker. I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty I didn't, sure it did. I didn't do that. I didn't want to upset any oh. Hamilton fans <laughs> or Wicked fans. It's not a competition, everybody. I'm sure Phantom has a few platinums. Yes, uh, there's new Viola yeah, Davis is developing an ABC musical, 60s musical yeah. show called The Zip Coders about uh, a, a Texas African-American teens in the 60s who want to be the next Beatles. Yeah. That Interesting. Fun. There's going to be um, some singing in there. Drama League will be honoring David Hyde Pierce um, on November the 7th. I'm going to that. Sierra Boggess, Billy Potter. Oh, it's all right. Sam. Very, very fancy. Very it's fancy. A fancy one. Yeah, definitely. Um, the front page stars were on The View today. Nathan Lane. I, 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 it's too naughty and dirty for we me to get him. to on Live at Five. But after you've watched Live at Five, go and look at Odds and Ends and look at the video because Nathan Lane was talking about John Slattery naked and 
You won't hear the word elbow the same way ever again. Just, yeah. Uh, a um, few extra things. We yes. have a London Q&A with a, with a kid named Charlie Stem, who's in half a sixpence. But yeah. he, he, he apparently was monkey number three in Wicked. Oh. Which is in a very well, important Well, I mean, role. very we that essential. Um, Matt Doyle, who will be in the new Sweeney Todd off-Broadway, came in and did a music video here. Uh, Daniel and Laura Curtis, these two uh, the married British uh, musical theater songwriters, have a new album out, mm -hmm. and he's singing one of their songs called Playing Games. You can watch that. Yep. We have an exit interview from Carrie St. Louis, who unfortunately is leaving the role of Glinda. Uh, the so announcement, we love, we love her. the new Glinda announcement is, is There's coming. There's a new Glinda, yeah. yes, any minute, any we'll, know, minute. we'll know the new Glinda. There's a new episode of Bronx Bullet, uh, Ariana DeBose's uh, vlog, episode number five. It's in tech now. And Mr. Joel Gray was on Show People, and he is not an easy interview. It's funny, when you watch, if you watch it, I'm talking a lot. It's okay. kind of like a monologue because Joel is a great guy and and very open. Obviously, if you've read his book, yeah. very open to talking about his life. But he also just loves to nod and smile and say, that's true. That's true. Okay. And then I just kept going. Well, hopefully, but I love him and I'm so thrilled he was here. that's not going to happen right now with um, Oh, my Hug. God. I'm not worried about that. So come on in, Jen. <laughs> Yay. I just want to nod and smile. How are you doing? <laughs> Over at the Schubert. Yes, I'm good. I'm you're, so excited to be there. You're enjoying Because obviously you're on the tour, and then yes. you came in in September, is that Yes, right? so it's been about two months. Yeah. Now. yeah. How's working with Leslie Margarita? Oh, we we, we see the vlogs. Yes, um, she's hilarious. I mean, she's so funny. How are you supposed not to crack up the whole time on stage when you're trying to have a touching moment? And I don't know what <laughs> Leslie is doing backstage, but you sort of are wondering, mm, really. Well, I don't. Luckily, I don't have a lot of touching moments in my time on stage with her. But um, I, I do feel like even at the end, I've, I don't know that I've ever seen someone have as much fun as she has. She you has so the much fun. On stage. at the end and everything. It's oh, just. Gosh. Nuts! Yes. Absolutely <laughs> nuts! Mm -hmm. And you, has she, she, she got you to do the last episode of Let's Not Books You appear. Oh, yes, I was. Yeah, a little uh, was, cameo yeah, moment. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> cameo moment. She came and saw my dressing room. Yeah. She's nuts. She's nuts. <laughs> um, okay, so you're in the final cast um, yeah. at the Schubert Theatre, which actually must be incredible because I think Leslie said it herself you either want to open the show or close the show. Yeah, yeah. So how is it there? Is it just the audiences going nuts every night? The audiences are great. It's amazing to me. It's so full all the time. And and yeah, we have we have great houses. We just had um, a TDF matinee the other day of over a thousand kids. Oh, you wow. Know? And it's amazing being out there with so many kids. You know, they just, their reactions are so intense. It's cool. Because the show is, is actually, I mean, I mean, I saw it recently because I was interviewing Bryce. I sort of like to it's from Matilda's perspective, mm -hmm. yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it it really is. I wonder I wonder if they would say that, but I think with all of the characters being so larger than life, yeah. the adults, like I really think it is from her perspective. What do you love about playing Miss Honey? Because she's the gorgeous, lovely. She's a happy <laughs> role. <gasps> oh, I don't think she's that happy. Well, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, she's the one that sort of hope yeah, compared yeah. to Trunchbull. She's a light to Trunchbull, sort of yeah. rather dark. I mean, I think scary it's. Side. I think what I love most about it is is getting to work with the Matilda and really uh, just trying to save that little girl, mm. trying to or trying to reach out of my own comfort zone, her own comfort zone, to do something for an extraordinary child. Yeah, yeah. Now, David wants to know what is what what it, what is it like rotating child performers so often? That's a good question, David. Uh, yeah, it's great. I mean, each kid is so different it's it's really amazing having gone through the process mm. with the Matildas when I started the tour you really see they direct them the direction is so specific and it really makes you see how even though they all get directed the same way yeah. each child's personality comes into it so much it's, it's had, cool getting and to you've worked change. And because you had three on tour, is that right? I had six. And so so I wow. Have, and, and we had one who came in to cover a bit, so I worked with ten Matildas. Oh, my yeah. word. So cool. And they each have their different characters. Yeah, and different. yeah. Now, when you watch the show, there's a lot going on. This is one of our favorite Live at Fibers questions. Have you had any onstage mishaps that we need to know about? We still I, got covered uh, up, but... <laughs> But, you know, we always uh, like hearing about these. I mean, I haven't had too many since I've been here on Broadway. I'd say my first show, it was a little bit different here. Uh, when I knock on the door in uh, the first, my first song, 
on tour, I could just knock and there was a pit so they could see me and they would knock with me. And uh, I, I'm supposed to look at the conductor here. I think my first night on Broadway, I full on closed my eyes and went like this and <laughs> my knocks were not uh, not happening. But one of my favorites actually from the tour, yep. uh, oh. this was with Bryce. Oh, uh, this Bryce. was when Bryce was on tour with me. He, uh, he didn't have his whistle for the gym scene, and he's supposed to enter <laughs> oh, no. whistling, and he didn't have it, so he entered going, ah, <laughs> him. And I, I died because I have to stand there with those books trying to be serious and scared, and I was just like, <laughs> don't know. Are you kidding? <laughs> it was so much fun. Uh, so Sarah funny. wants to know, what is your favorite part of the show to be in? Uh, uh, the ha Miss Honey's house. When I go to Miss Honey's house with Matilda, that is my favorite part. And Brooke want, would wants to know what what is it like singing that number? Uh, it's it's been such a journey. Uh, just so it's gone through so many different stages. I feel like um, sometimes it's hard. I've had to think about how to do it, uh, like with my emotions, with my feelings, and not. Uh, not kill my voice by the end, mm -hmm. you know, because um, she's pretty upset. But you don't want your uh, your muscles to get too too tense that then they get stuck there. <laughs> um, Peyton wants to know what is your favorite thing about Miss Honey. Uh, my favorite thing about Miss Honey is that I think she is very strong and she just doesn't know it. And I think there are a lot of people out there like that. I don't know what's gonna go to say. <laughs> No, 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 no. But it's true. <laughs> she is. But it's one of those shows that is incredibly inspirational, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I think Matilda speaks to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say. Yeah, I think it's, and it's so topical right now with bullies yeah. and, and, I mean, speaking up. Yeah. Isn't you must have some incredible experiences at stage door with that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, we have a lot of fans at the stage door. I've gotten to meet some really adorable children. Yeah. Um, I haven't, I haven't gotten into bullying yeah, too much no, no. with fans at the stage door, but I have met some really adorable, very tiny people. Um, <laughs> I had so, a little girl come up to me the other day and say, "I like the way you look." And I said, "Well, I like oh. the way you look." She said, I was wondering if you were going to take a picture with me. I said, yeah, well, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, okay, another question coming in. What's the biggest difference between the tour and Broadway? Hmm. Apart from door knocking. Uh, there, there are just some technical differences. Um, uh, the technical stuff is cool in both places. Uh, but on, on tour, we had our desks come in from the wings on a track um, on Broadway. They come up from the floor. Uh, I'd say maybe the biggest difference for me is that here on Broadway, the, the stage is on a rake. So that means, you know, it's slanted yeah. down. It's like kind of like working on a, a tiny hill. Um, in my mind, when I was getting ready to come in, I was imagining this rake like being like a skate park. And I was just like, how am I going to ride that scooter down that rake? Um, but it's, it's, it's not that bad. It's okay. It's <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah. No it's accidents okay. off the scooter yet. None yet. Um, Robert wants to know, speaking of rotation of actors, how does acting with an understudy change your performance, if at all? Um, it does It does change it. I mean, like, I think I stick to my core, but you just have to listen. You really have to listen and just be in the moment and take in how they're giving you things and react to it. It's, you know, it's cool. It definitely makes things fresh. Um, now, you've also been on Broadway in Gentleman's Guide and Violet. Have you got any dream Broadway roles? We like to put it out there here, at Live at Five. Um, golly. After, I mean, I really want to do something new. I really want to originate something. Okay. Um, I love being at the beginning of things. Yeah. But uh, some dream roles. I really want to play Lenny in Crimes of the Heart. Okay. Um, I'd love to be the witch in Into the Woods. Oh, would you? Dot in Sunday in the Park. Uh... You know, so I'd really like to do something like ensemble -y and like creating like the scenery with your bodies and stuff. Have you got any <laughs> anyone you'd love to work with? Oh God, there are a lot of people I'd love to work with. Um, I mean, when I think about directors, uh, I had a director that I worked with in Chicago, Rachel Rockwell, mm -hmm. who's doing some things here now. Um, I'd love to work with her again. I'd love to work with Lee Silverman again. I only worked yeah. with her so briefly on Violet. Um, uh, I'd love to work with Alex Timbers. Um, I'd love to work with Gary Griffin, who I worked with very briefly and mostly got to observe, and he was so brilliant. Um, golly, 
No, no, no. There's no, no, so that's, many. That's all <laughs> good. Yeah. Um, and I've been talking away, and we've been asked, how do you deal with vocal fatigue? Because, I mean, it's eight shows a week, and it's tough. Eight shows a week. Um, yeah. Because, uh, I mean, it's really just rest. And what I find gets tired more than anything is my body. Um, so it's, it's massages or it's physical therapy. Um, I've tried some acupuncture lately. Um, it's great. We love yeah, acupuncture. Exactly. It works, it everybody. Sure it works. Does. Find it's the right cool. person and it works. Um, yeah, and just like rolling out and Epsom salt baths and just really taking care of yourself and getting sleep, all those things. Well, they're all loving your bucket list and your dream roles. Oh, um, I do sort of like to <laughs> wrap the question, wrap, wrap the whole um, Live at Five yeah. up. Why do you think audiences love Matilda as much as you do? Hmm. Uh, I mean, I kind of think when we're kids, we're all Matilda. We're not exactly. Like, we don't all have special powers, and we're not, like, uh, super crazy smart like she is. But, I mean, I think it's really the story of these children being brave and triumphing. And I think we all, we all are that kid inside you know um or you are that kid now yeah. um and it's about triumphing over bullies and speaking up for what's right and and having the power to change your story and I think we all always have that and that's so inspiring Jennifer Blood thank you very much go see her and Miss Honey uh, through the beginning of the year January 1st there you go um have a wonderful evening I have five see you tomorrow